Good people. Hope you're having a good day so far. I wanted to hop on and ask you a really simple question. Would you consider yourself a good person? And I think for a lot of us, we would all say, well, yeah, I mean, I'm not perfect, but I try to be a good person, right? I don't try to be blatantly evil all the time in my life. So here's the deal. We've got a, a, a good way to find out whether or not you're a good person, but I wanna kinda sidetrack for a second and talk you guys through an example really fast. Let's say that you were in front of a judge, right? And let's say that you're in front of a judge because you happened to get a ticket for something, right? That judge's job is to judge you based on the crimes that you have committed, right? And so that verdict of guilty or not guilty is not based upon other good deeds that you've done in your life. It's based upon whether or not you were guilty of that particular thing in your personal life of having ever done it, right? So you could look at that judge and go, judge, you shouldn't give me this ticket and I'm not guilty because I walked this cute little old lady across the street several times. Judge, you shouldn't give me this ticket because I gave money to a person one time who is in need. You know, the judge is gonna look at you and go, well, that's great, I'm, gr I'm glad you've done these things, but that's not what we're here for today. We're here because you have a parking ticket, right? And so let's look at our example here today. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to show you the Ten Commandments, and I want to ask you questions about just a few of them, okay, in the Bible. So let's let's do this for kicks, okay? So um, one of the Ten Commandments is you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, right? So if you've ever said, oh my G-O-D, you know, you're guilty of this one. And I would say a lot of us have been guilty of saying that before, right? Okay. So we've officially broken one of the 10 commandments, right? So if we were to be judged just based on that one commandment, how many of us would be guilty? Quite a few, right? Okay. Maybe you haven't done that, but maybe here's another one. Um, do not steal. How many of you guys have ever stolen before, even if it's something really little? Let's say you accidentally walked off with a pen from work or something happened like that, right? So, what are stealers, what are people who steal called? Stealers, right? And so we would probably, uh, all of us, be guilty of that one. Let's look at another one. Um, you know, it says, do not lie, right? So how many of us have ever told a lie before? We've probably told a bunch of lies <laughs> in our life, you know? Um, and so we'd all be guilty of that one as well, right? And so you can kind of see a theme here right? There's, there's all these different commandments. And if we're guilty of breaking even one of them, if we were to stand in front of a judge, right, they would say you're guilty, right? Because it's not based on all the other good works that we've done in our life. Based on the crimes that were brought up against us, did you tick that box? And we would all have to say yes, right? Because, you know, I'm pretty sure that all of us would be guilty of this, right? And so here's the deal. You officially have a problem, right? We all have a problem because none of us could pass this test correctly, right? And so here's the deal, you guys. Your salvation is when you come up to God, a lot of people go, well, God, you're going to let me into heaven because I'm a good person. Here's the deal, you guys. God's a just God, right? And so just like any other judge who's sitting on the stand, you know, and they're looking at your life, you know, if they're judging you for a parking ticket, for example, it doesn't matter how many other good acts you've done in your life. You know, if you were based on that particular verdict, you would still be guilty, right? So if the standard is Jesus Christ, who never sinned, we would have to be better than that or just as good as that in order to make it on our own, right? Without needing some kind of a thing to stand in the gap for us to ensure that we could be saved. Because otherwise, one lie would cause us to go to hell. You know, one time where we accidentally stole something would cause us to go to hell, right? And so here's our problem, you guys. Based on what we just looked at, none of us are considered good people according to the standard that God has. Amen. So, Jesus is a loving God, right? 
And so there was a problem. And he goes, I can't see all of humanity, you know, go to hell. This is not going to work, right? And so what God did was he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to come and to die on the cross for our sins. He lived a perfect life. He endured all this stuff for us so that he can stand in the gap. In other words, think about it this way. So let's say that you're in jail, you've been accused of that ticket, and you were 100% guilty, right? And let's say that a bail bondsman comes in and they say, you know, it's however much money for this ticket, I'm going to offer to pay for them so that they can then go free. Did you earn that? Of course not, right? But are you still able to go free? Yes, because the debt has been paid. That price, that guilty verdict has now been paid, right? So here's the deal, you guys. Jesus Christ died on the cross for us with our sins so that even though we stand before God and, you know, our verdict would be guilty because of his sacrifice and what he did for us, when we accept him, the verdict then becomes not guilty. Amen. Because he stands in the gap and he quote unquote pays that bail for us and he sets us free, right? Because he can do that because he's the standard of perfection, right? We can't do that because we don't have a standard of perfection. Amen. And so there's a few things to accepting Jesus Christ. Number one, you've got to believe that, you know, he completely paid the price. You've got to believe that he died, he rose again, and he paid the price for your sins. The second thing is you've got to repent, which means that all that stuff that I was reading that we're all so guilty of is you've got to try to live a lifestyle away from sin. It's not to say we're going to be perfect, but it says that you're saying, I'm going to give up this old lifestyle of trying to live in all this stuff, and I'm going to surrender my life to Jesus Christ, and I'm going to try to turn it around and live for him. Amen. So with all of that being said, if you answered all those questions and you have determined that you cannot say that you are a quote unquote good person, which none of us could meet that standard, right? And you want to give your life to Jesus Christ because heaven and hell are real. And that's why Jesus had to come is to give us that gift of salvation because he doesn't want anybody going to hell. What you can do is you can either leave a message on this video or shoot me an email to jillsharpministries at gmail.com and I'll pray with you and I'll walk you through a prayer that can allow you to give your life to Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you listened to this video and if you learned that the verdict would be guilty and you learned that you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, let me pray with you today because God stood in the gap. We were not worthy. We didn't deserve it. But regardless, just like that bail bondsman that would stand in front of a judge, God stood in the gap and he said, you know what? You are guilty of these sins, but I love you and I don't want you to go to hell. And so he stood in that gap for us and he wants to give you this free gift of salvation. Amen. So reach out if you need to pray. Hope you guys have a great night. I'll talk to you soon.